Oracle Live Analytics and AI event. And as you know, Oracle has a monthly event around its Fusion apps. It, you know, constant updates to its SaaS application uh, for its customers. And this month was about analytics and AI. Yeah, we can hit this one pretty quick, Pat, because we can uh, point our customers, customers. We can point our beautiful audience and, and friends out there uh, to a pod that we actually did with two of the most senior execs in this business from Oracle, uh, uh, TK Anand and Steve Miranda. But we talked to them ahead of the event. So what actually came out of the event? And, and this event was really not just, I wouldn't just call it analytics and AI, but it was really about building on the analytics cloud, the autonomous data warehouse. Um, to be able to implement AI and analytics to drive supply chain. And it was yeah. a very timely announcement because if you're not familiar, Oracle Fusion has what's called their SCM solution or their supply chain and manufacturing solution. And of course, if you've been under a rock, maybe you aren't aware that uh, we're having a little problem on a global basis. And this isn't just chips, by the way. We talk a lot about chips because we're in tech, but you know, it's everything. It's uh, it's it's gasoline. It's fabric. It's clothing. It's 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 uh, you know, paint. It's ladders. It's uh, you know, lumber. It, it, whatever it is, we can't get it. And there we are heading into the holidays. And for many companies, retailers, they have bare shelves. And of course, this is driving inflation. This is not the six five economics edition. But let's just say when you don't have enough materials and you don't have enough inventory and you have people that want stuff, what it does is it drives prices up like crazy and it causes a lot of issues. And by the way, this causes problems for companies to be able to function and operate and plan. So right now, the ability to take data analytics, both internal to the company, external analytics that are available for things like market demand that are being created every day through research and being able to apply those so that you know. Pat, you and I have talked about this quite a bit and not to get a little off topic, but the companies that have done the best through the supply chain shortage, especially in the chip space, were the companies that understood what was gonna happen to their demand and were able to identify early that the disruption of COVID wasn't actually gonna be a disruption. In fact, it could have been an accelerant to their businesses. Automotive companies immediately cut supply or cut forecasts and cut off their basically their arms and it's still not in many cases recovered from it. Whereas other companies had a better understanding, for instance, you know, one company that did extraordinarily well it was Dell, another Lenovo that had their eyes on their long term supply chain, understood the demand for PCs that was going to be caused by this actual uh, pandemic and then were able to get out in front of it and their interruptions were less. They weren't non-existent, but they were less. Analytics and technology, like what is being built here in Fusion Cloud Supply Chain and Manufacturing, can help your company. Again, being very clear, what's being announced is that, you know, there are opportunities to utilize technology to get your arms around more quickly the risks of global events, natural disasters, updates to trade agreements, changes in global policy, macroeconomics, and be able to utilize that to understand what kind of uh, supply you need. You have better visibility into how, how is your supply chain performing to understand um, the process and how it's working towards your business goals. And then of course, to be able to detect in advance more proactively where a disruption might be. You know, I, I laughingly, I heard a great story a few weeks back when I was doing some, some research about, you know, I used the word paint earlier, Pat, you know, and, and the fact of the matter was, is, you know, one time it was, they couldn't get the cans to put the paint in. So you could get all the paint you needed, but you couldn't get a can to put the paint in to actually be able to sell the paint. And then there was another point where they could get all the cans and then they couldn't get the resin required because you know that's a chemical compound that ex it's chemicals that ends up making the out the final product. So when you have a supply chain, what people kind of need to visualize is you know that uh, like a chain link, right? And that the fact is that oftentimes to get to a final product, there's could be it could be a small number five or six it could be 500 or 600 uh, you know the substrates for semiconductors are extraordinarily complex and the materials all the way back to raw materials there's a ton of different components that go into making it happen and then of course there's labor impacts which is a whole nother thing that's going on this was the focus of this week's oracle live event it's that there are technologies available. There's investments the company can make. Um, Oracle has been working very hard and building and uh, building upon that Fusion platform to be able to get deeper. And by the way, I really was impressed that they're utilizing this market opportunity 
to enhance this in a regular cadence because right now this is something I believe companies need very badly. And so it was a it was a good announcement, Pat. Uh, a good a good opportunity. By the way, check out our conversation with TK and Steve because those guys did a great job of explaining what they're doing. My favorite part of the event was not actually the event itself, um, although I did enjoy that. Well, I like that too, but but I liked a demo video that that they did, which essentially showed a, a scooter maker. It looked like a general manager or maybe a product manager that that said uh, that hey, you know, all the data suggests that they are not going to have enough supply to be able to hit hit demand, right? And it wasn't something that that came through some phone call or some spreadsheet. It was it was real time. Okay. And then they get the supply chain folks, they get the product management, they get uh, engineering on the phone, and the system auto magically knows that there are certain parts of the scooter that can be borrowed from scooters that aren't selling as well. Okay. And, you know, literally on, on, on the Zoom call and using Slack, uh, by the way, which I thought was, uh, or, or what looked like Slack, sorry, it wasn't Slack. Um, they came together and ultimately uh, reconfigured a product uh, to be able to uh, pull more parts off of other scooters that weren't selling as well. And, and you know, my background is, uh, you know, product management and product marketing and, and strategy, but that definitely harkens back to my product management days and general management days where these were real life conversations you would have. And the only way you would know you were heading in the wrong direction, it was too late to, to really do much about it, right? You would stock out, you would sell out, and then you'd have to wait one or two months to make something happening. This is all about pre-prediction, right? Uh, not pre-prediction, but prediction that something is, is going to happen. And that is true. That really is the true power of of what i think um oracle is bringing to s supply chain management and it was pretty cool watch the video we'll put it in the show notes 